Today we look at the Illinois basketball newcomers and how they fit the roster. If you haven't yet, please share and subscribe to help grow the channel, and I hope you enjoy the video. Today's video is powered by SeatGeek. Get $20 off any tickets sold using promo code AntWright on the SeatGeek app or website. Illinois has signed the number 23 recruiting class in the country and the number four class in the Big Ten. They come off their best season in over 15 years, finishing 24 and seven, winning the Big Ten Tournament Championship and earning a one seed in the NCAA Tournament, a tournament they haven't been a part of since 2013. Ayo Dusumu and Kofi Coburn were all Big Ten first team performers and both ended up declaring for the NBA draft. Adam Miller was one of the better freshmen in the league last season and he ended up transferring to LSU. With three starters gone from a successful team, Illinois would heavily rely upon Andre Corbello and Trent Frazier to carry the team. Two high major transfers were able to fill gaps right away, and Illinois brought in three freshmen from the 2021 class. Then the Illini got great news by getting 7-foot, 290-pound big man Kofi Coburn back to campus to return for another year. With him, they move into a tier of teams that can compete for a Big Ten championship. But with these new five pieces coming in, what should you expect from them and who should be able to play right away based on the depth at their position? Alfonso Plummer comes in after playing Juco at Arizona Western College and then two years at Utah. If they finished a bit better in the Pac-12, I think he would have gotten some all Pac-12 nods, at least an honorable mention. He put up almost 14 per game on 11 shots. His job is to fill it up, score the ball any way he can. He wasn't just some left-handed three-point launcher. Only 60% of his shots came from deep, while he mixed it up a bit with 40% of his shots coming from two. And at 6'1", 180, he shot pretty well for his size, over 52% on decent usage. These shots from two are mostly coming from off the balance dribble pull-ups. And even though he did have a good balance with the shot selection, he's a three-point specialist, and teams try to run him off the line. He hit over 100 threes in two seasons at Utah on 40% shooting. He does not stop moving and he's always hunting for his shot. Bouncy shooter, really high lift on his shot coming off screens and pulling up from mid range. When he committed, he saw an opportunity with Ayo Dusumu declaring for the draft, Adam Miller transferring, and thinking Trent Frazier was gone as well. It would have been an all Puerto Rican backcourt with him and Andre Curbelo. Then it was announced Frazier was returning the glue for their one seed squad just a season prior. Frazier also returns playing almost 34 minutes per game, and I don't see Frazier sitting. I also see Corbello playing at least 30 minutes per game too. That leaves about 15, 16 minutes in the backcourt for a guy who played 28 minutes last year. He's not only competing with Corbello and Frazier for time, we know Underwood is open to playing a three guard lineup. So he'll also compete against bigger guards and wings like Demonte Williams, Jacob Grandison, Austin Hutcherson, and the three freshmen, Brandon Pajemski, RJ Melendez, and Luke Goody. The guard wing depth at Illinois this upcoming season is going to be hands down one of the best in the country. Omar Payne comes in from the SEC playing two years for the Florida Gators. The 6'10", 230 pound center out of Montverde Academy was a top 50 recruit and the number 11 center in the 2019 recruiting class. He was a backup in his first two years, but he was a menace defensively. He was 10th in the league in blocks per game in each of his first two seasons. And that's impressive when he played less than 16 minutes per game. His best outing at Florida was against Auburn his freshman year, putting up 19 points, 11 rebounds on 100% shooting. He didn't get too many touches as a scorer, but when he got his chances, he was 75% from the field. He needs to get more aggressive in the paint and needs to work on his free throw shooting. Under three shots per game and only shot 21 free throws for the year, which is pretty low for a post player who's not perimeter oriented. He's had some bad luck though each year when it comes to competing for a spot. Out of high school, he commits to Florida, signs his letter of intent, and then over the summer, he's packing up, coming to Florida, end of June, highly regarded grad transfer, Kerry Blackshear, an all ACC big man, announces he's transferring from Virginia Tech to Florida. So Omar's minutes were limited that first year. Then the sophomore year comes, and with Blackshear moving on after his all SEC season, Payne was about to take over big man duties. And at the end of April, it's announced that Michigan's Colin Castleton will be transferring into Florida. 
didn't seem like someone who would impact pain due to playing less than eight minutes per game and no starts at Michigan, but Castleton came in and had a second team all SEC type of year. Then Payne hits the transfer portal for a fresh start. Then he sees first team all Big Ten center Kofi Coburn declare for the NBA draft, plus enter the transfer portal and Omar immediately sees an opportunity with Illinois. Then on July 23rd, Kofi Coburn announces he's returning back to Illinois. Just really tough luck for him. Kofi averaged 27 minutes per game, and due to shooting, Payne won't be able to play alongside him, so 13 minutes will be up for grabs at the five-man spot between Omar Payne and probably Coleman Hawkins, and possibly seven-footer Brandon Lieb out of Deerfield, Illinois who held Utah, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State offers out of high school. He didn't play much in year one, but at seven feet, who knows what could happen if he has a great spring and summer. Luke Goody comes in as the number 97 recruit overall and the number 20 small forward in the country. He reminds me a lot of Brady Manick, good length on the outside, versatile, high IQ, lethal shooter. He's listed as a small forward, but he'd be such a great four man, especially for Illinois with how much competition there's gonna be at the three spot this year. 6'7", 200 pounds right now, but could easily be like Manic, where he ends up 6'9", 230 in a couple years. Illinois needs a bigger shooter at the four to complement Kofi Coburn and Omar Payne on the inside, and also gives more spacing for Andre Cabello to work his magic to create for the best shot available. He does have to go through a few veterans for playing time though. Coleman Hawkins is about 6'9", but will have to get better from deep to play alongside Coburn or Payne. Jacob Grandison started 16 games in the second half of the season. Demonte Williams started 17 games, mostly in the first half of the year. But both of those guys didn't shoot much despite being very efficient from deep. Austin Hutcherson has some back issues, but should be available this year too. Hearing he has a very, very high ceiling. Goody will also compete with Melendez and Pajemski along with Williams, Grandison, and Hutcherson for time at the three. RJ Melendez comes in as the number 90 recruit overall and the number 18 small forward in the country. At 6'7", 190, with his skill set and length, he'll be able to play any of the wing positions. He has to go through Williams, Grandison, Goody, Pajemski, even Hawkins, if he's looking to get some time at the four spot. I have a full breakdown available right now for RJ in the top right hand corner. It will also be available down in the description. Now, Brandon Pajemski comes in as the number 104 recruit overall and the 24th shooting guard in the country. He's about 6'5", lefty, good with the basketball and can shoot it. But as you've seen, the wing position is crowded this year. He's probably best competing for the one and two spots this season. Watching his film, I think he can handle the ball enough to back up Corbello, keeping Frazier off the ball in his element. That gets him about 10 minutes per game as a freshman, maybe. Then if he can shoot it well enough in his opportunities, he can challenge guys like Plummer and Williams for more minutes. But it's gonna be very tough in year one to find minutes for him. I have a full breakdown available right now for Brandon in the top right hand corner. and will also be available down in the description. Illinois has so much talent coming in with these freshmen and transfers, even though I can see a couple of them not playing much this year. Because I don't think many people realize they return a lot of good players too. Losing Ayo hurt, but it could be argued that Illinois was more dangerous when he didn't play. Because now teams didn't know who was going to hurt them, and the ball was spread to more players. It was tough for teams to pinpoint who the major threats were on the outside. And with Kofi returning, that's big for the team because it'll take so much pressure off of guys. But however, the lineups are balanced. I think you have to surround the best cast around Corbello, Frazier, and Kofi. The team doesn't reach their goals without those three, and Brad Underwood has plenty of viable options, both new and returning to round out the rotation to compete for a Big Ten championship and more. Can't guard me.